How's your life? Amazing, man. Amazing. I remember I seen you out once. I mean, obviously you go out a lot, but I seen you out once. I forgot how long ago. It was like, I don't know, it was some random, was I think like Leo DiCaprio was there or some crazy. I don't know. Maybe you were what party? What party? Is? I don't know. There's too many of those nights. Honestly. But do you still do a lot of that? Like, so I was out till 5 a.m. last night. I won't lie to you. There was this little party in somewhere in Beverly Hills, and it was a, a little bit of a movie. But I, it's been a lot less, far and and few between. Um, not a lot of nightlife. Nightlife in LA is kind of, yeah. it's not, it's not its best. Um, was there a better time? Definitely, dude. What? I mean, I we talk about it all the time in the house and w- with my core little team. Internet 2017 is the Bro, vibe. Oh, f- That's the vibe. That's all 2020. We're try- I'm trying to hop in a time machine and, you know, bring Internet 2017 Bro. to 2024. And it's honestly, things are starting to feel that way. Do you I, feel I, that? Yes, yes. It's f-ing sick, man. There's something about like, I don't know, just like the vibrations, like, globally it just feels like i don't know at the same time it seems up too like the world up. no it's i feel big, like it's more up than it's ever been it's big time up it'll always be more up than it was the day before i think that's just like that's how it's gonna go yeah with the, with what we do the internet all that but i mean making the best of it and putting your best foot forward and being grateful for like all the that's that is in a good spot or a better spot i mean at the same time too it's never been easier more comfortable better to be a human being you know what i mean yeah it's interesting like when you zoom out like a hundred thousand years ago we're like struggling you know what yeah, I mean? like everybody we have, was we have a lot more tools yeah even Wait. kings were struggling the life expectancy and like yeah just the food yeah I, I was reading eat. something i was reading something recently they were saying like if you live for the next five years like people are going to live to like some crazy so some crazy number people are really going to start Taken to the streets and going crazy when like Jeff Bezos doesn't die at like a hundred and he still looks like he's fifty. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's it's, gonna, whole, it's gonna get weird. That's a whole weird thing. The AI stuff. There's some. It's just so much crazy going on where we're like, we are really in the transition into like a different sort of brother. It's about to get so weird. And I I'm in this bubble right now. Like I live with. I don't know what it is about me. I've always felt the need to live with people that I work with. That's fair. And I live in Hollywood right now with, um, you know, four or five crypto degenerates. And I spent a lot of time over the last, you know, three, four years deep diving into this weird world, this weird crypto web three world. And, you know, just I building like the network I and f- figuring it out. I'm <laughs> a big fan of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I have, I, I don't know if you, I think you have a lot of money in that. I have a lot of money in those two. Good. It you feels should. great. Good. But I the think rest in 2024, of it, anybody that has that ha, that's fortunate enough to be able to park their money anywhere should have at minimum. I think it's irresponsible almost to not have at least 20 percent of your money in crypto. Honestly. Why? Why? Just because it's it, there's a really solid shot. I mean, I have pretty much, you know, my entire life bet on the fact that when you zoom out. You know, in five years from now, Bitcoin is going to be worth more money than it is today. I think, I don't know, when you when you really like break it down and, and you dive deep into it and you, you know, you see the way that the history of finance has worked and the history of money has worked. It's just, it it seems to, it seems like that's the natural progression of how it's going to work. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? It's kind, of a no, saw... it's kind of a no brainer. Yeah. And I don't know, like the ROI on it and like the expected return that I would have on a on an investment like Bitcoin, like you're not you can't beat it with anything. And it, yeah. it feels safer. It feels safer than USD almost to me. And I know it sounds f-ing insane, but no, not at this point. Um, but also when I what saw, are you going to do buy a house? I mean, that's that's a cool, easy, low risk thing. But the returns on it, I don't know. Yeah. Bitcoin and then when I saw BlackRock buy a ton of it, you're mm-hmm. just kind of like, well, clearly they know a lot of everything. And they control money for in a sense. So it's Those like got, as soon as they buy it, I'm like, oh, I'm in. Yeah, you want to talk about the Illuminati and like yeah. who really owns planet Earth? It's yeah, it's it is what it is. Like BlackRock, they manage trillions of dollars worth of assets and shit. Yeah. Like, so if they're insane. buying Bitcoin, I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. Yeah, Coca Cola and Pepsi. BlackRock yeah. is the. Is, you know what I mean? Bro, they, I mean, they own everything. Yeah. So okay, on that note though, don't you think like I feel like all the other stuff is just like a it's like a luck. So I'll break it down like this. Or like you so, get f- you lucky. So the dot-com boom bubble, 
the internet pops off, starts popping off. There's a bunch of naysayers like the internet. There's all these articles in newspapers and, and, you know, little bits of media that were, you know, put out into the world during the beginning of the internet that kind of wrote off the internet. Like this is a phase. This is a fad. Like this isn't anything real, which obviously like if the internet just went out tomorrow, the world would collapse. Around yeah, us. It's near like, every it, business. We need it. it. We yeah. now we need it. It's just like, you know, running water and electricity. It's as essential to our daily life, especially in America as things like that. So obviously the way it's scaled is massive. Everybody participates in this tech. It's very, very much needed. People, I feel like people's relationship and opinion and kind of perspective on crypto web three tech is very similar. And I feel like the outcomes will be very similar. So who are the big winners from er the earliest days of the internet that are still around? It's like Microsoft and yeah. like Google and yeah. like Amazon was pretty early too. But besides those, which are really big, yeah. if you got in early to those things, you're, you're probably set for life. You yeah. know what I mean? But how many thousands of other little startups and little projects and dot coms existed that were valued and perceived the same as those early internet? You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. So again, when you zoom out five, 10 years from now in crypto, there's probably like, you know, besides the big L ones like Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, right. et cetera. How many of these products, entities are going to exist or be relevant or, you know, be a part of everybody's day to day, you know, five, 10 years from now? Probably not many. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> as far as the way that I navigate crypto, it's a lot of day to day, you know, obviously like. I feel, and I feel like you were one of the first people I saw in influencer space, like really into crypto. I love that like, you said that. It makes no, me I mean feel that. so like, good. Like a like a long time ago. You're not wrong, man. You're not wrong. I, I, was, I watch everything. Yeah, no, I, I know, everything. I know. And I mean, you roll in the same circle, social circle. By the way, I don't do podcasts. Like yeah. the last podcast I did was Logan's, and Mike had to ask me, and I canceled on that thing twenty times before I finally did it. Would only ever do that for Mike. I'll hop on Aiden's stream once in a while. The content. Like, I, it's, it's really not for me, but you, you and I have always, like, just ran in the same circles, yeah. had the same friend groups, and I feel like we connected not on some cloud, but on some, like, yeah. seeing you at parties and just, like, yeah, yeah. human shit. So, I don't know, when you when you hit me up to do this, I was no, I'm, more I'm grateful. than happy to come on. I'm grateful. Thank you for saying that, by the way. Honestly, like, the financial with this crypto stuff is awesome. It's obviously a, an amazing, like, byproduct. Um. But being right and being early, like that's, I live for that in yeah. everything, like music and clothes and just everything. Like I love being on early. It, it makes, it, it, that's what drives me. And I was buying crypto punks and talking about NFTs before anybody knew what this was. I and, I, that. and I brought that term to so many people and so many people heard that for the first time through me. And I can love that. And I love even more so that, you know, kids I lived with at the time, Mike Malak and Aiden and Rice yeah. and like my managers and like, dude, stop buying these things. Are you <laughs> out of your mind? Like, what's wrong with you? It always goes that way. And though. then something happened really quickly. And, you know, I 10 X on these investments and everybody's looking at me like, and I'm, I was trying to, I was begging these guys to buy these things. I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And it's something as simple as that. Like, I don't know. You fire, you know, 10, $20,000 in this. It's that's a, that's a lot of money for anybody by anybody's standards, right? And you want to protect that and you want to know where that's at. And you naturally But how did you have learn. any foresight? How do you have any <laughs> foresight like to know? So I have an edge and the, my perspective is a little bit clearer on the Web3 NFT specifically because of my history in gaming, traditional gaming. Like Counter-Strike skins, I'll kind of always attribute those to like the first, you NFTs. know, NFTs. Like yeah, the yeah. first idea of NFTs, you can freely trade them. There's an open market um, and just the way economics works. Like that was fucking, forever ago. Yeah, too. but there's forever ago and there's skins in that game that forever ago people were trading for, you know, 10,000 yeah. plus dollars, which again, if you kind of like turn your head and heard that for the first time, you're like, what the f are you guys talking about? Are you guys yeah. crazy? Yeah. But when you're in it, you play this every day, you, you start to understand like why a picture on a screen could be worth something. Yeah. It's just, it's the same psychological is why people wear paddocks and drive Lamborghinis and yeah. dress the way that they dress. It, it, yeah, it makes jewelry. them feel good about whatever they're, the community they're a part of. They have this sort of status. Yep. It's like you're signaling and projecting who you are to 
to everybody around you, right? And I mean, like our presence in the digital realm, it's becoming more and more relevant. You know what I mean? Like you have a Twitter handle and your picture, your little avatar. I always find it funny though when someone goes, this thing sold for this much money and <laughs> someone just screenshots and goes, I'm rich. Yeah, it's funny. It, obviously, it's not the original artwork, yeah. but I just find the, I just find the space so so like interesting but also so sketchy. Like, how do you not, like, have you ever been in a situation where you were like completely on some crypto? It's really sketchy. So the way that I initially got into crypto, it's funny because we actually, we have a production around Bryce Hall coming out. This next like Twitter vlog, I've been doing these like Twitter vlogs. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about that. Probably crypto native Twitter vlogs. But the next one is all about Bryce Hall. He kind of got caught shilling some like coin. That was on, recent, right? On the Twitter timeline a couple of days ago. Yeah, I saw that. And I remember David got caught caught up in some like that and everybody participated in these things you remember that like little stretch of time where kim kardashian mayweather jake paul everyone everyone logan got wrapped up in it and dragged mike into it like yeah. i think it's important to openly talk about this because a big thing that i think neither side realized because there is this crypto native community that very much lives in this bubble and to them it's like so no-brainer like bro that's a scam you're getting paid to shield this that's wrong yeah. And it's probably illegal. Like you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. But on the flip side, these, you know, traditional influencer media, content media guys, like they don't know any better. Like we know how this, it works in our world behind the scenes. It's deal flow from managers and stuff. And gets right. you get pitched a million things a day. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if, if things sound the right way in your brain by your standards and where your priorities are at, you're saying yes, or you're saying no. Right. Yeah. So, we can get you paid X amount of money for one tweet and do this and do that. And if it sounds good, it's like, all right, yeah, fuck it, whatever. Crypto's hot. Kids are talking about crypto. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. all right, do it. And my first experience with crypto was um, something along the lines of like a paid shill. It came to me through um, our sales team and my management, which I trust these guys with my life and my career. And this was like, kind of around the time that crypto really started to pop off 2021 early 2021 and it came to me you know just the same as any other deal phone it was like yo these this token i don't want to say it um if you dig deep enough you'll be able to find it but it, it was rel it was relevant to like my name my name made sense with the token and the the way it was pitched to me was these guys basically want you to be the spokesperson they want you to deliver like updates and news like with your face and your voice and they'll pay you a salary, yada, yada, yada. They'll give you like this big allocation in their token, whatever, whatever. I'm too dumb to even know what any of it means. Yeah. Ultimately, I never sold their token and they kind of used me onboarding me and like announcing me as this big pump to dump on whoever bought it. And that was my mistake getting wrapped up in that. And now, now that I know what I know now, it's so obvious like what happened. Yeah. But at the time it took me kind of coming out the other side to be like, wait, what the just happened? Yeah. And I felt, and honestly, created so many issues for me down the road. Like I had, like I had to kind of behind the scenes, like write that wrong. Um, but I'm grateful for it at the same time because in that moment, I decided I was never going to allow something like that to happen again. And I I needed to one establish some sort of solid network in crypto, and two know enough myself to never be able to be like over on some like that again if yeah. that makes sense but how do you find how do you that's my thing like because i've i've been in a similar situation and then how do you find people who are actually solid it's trial and error right it's like really it's just like anything how do you else. know if they know because i feel like, like everyone says oh i know i so know So what's something that you're super passionate about that maybe not necessarily everybody in your immediate circle is probably health fitness yeah right you definitely there i'm sure right on especially in social media I know a tiny, tiny bit about like that community and the way content works and like the creators and stuff. I'm sure there are some people who make like Instagram videos who are like LARPs and shit, like fakers, fakers, yeah. frauds, phonies, yeah. pushing whack product, pushing yeah. whack routine and whack game. Right. And like yeah. you are able to identify that really clearly because you live it every single day. Yeah. You would probably be somebody who would be a value to add to their network. Like if I wanted to get yoked up and be. Yeah. A vanilla gorilla like you i <laughs> want you in the network right but there are other guys who maybe if i you know what i mean came across they wouldn't you know what i mean it's it's kind of like that i yeah. don't know you just kind of spend the time and the effort and and be passionate about it to an extent and it's just i guess 
Some of it has to do with like your judge of character and your ability to identify frauds versus yeah. real ones, you know? Yeah. Just like anything else. Yeah, man. And speaking of that, I mean, obviously, I don't want to get too too deep into it, but like you, you've you obviously had a really interesting journey with FaZe and, and dealing with sort of, I, I, I guess what I would call from what I know, I don't know, I don't want to speak for you, but some fraudulent, some, some dumb shit that's happened. No, nah, man, it is what it is. And like, yeah. I'm as transparent as can be, open book. The fate is as simple as this. It's a tale as old as time. We created FaZe. FaZe was created in 2010, right? That's insane. Like, I mean, it's even get... insane to say it out loud. It's insane. Well, the that 30... was also one of the first. <clears throat> we got to give FaZe their credit where it's due. That was the first, I would say, like, group of creators who were really making this content thing a thing. Facts. And That's... when... You... You, I always say this. I even say this to like my new crack like crypto team. You don't really ever want to be first. First gets like they really, really do. Even when you look at like the first original like YouTubers who were like cracking on like an S tier level. Yeah. Those guys like touched a bag and touched money and touched success, but nothing compared to where, what the S tier Logan Pauls of the world, KSI's of the world. Yeah. Are came at the ones who came out. You're going to exit billionaires. You know yeah. what I mean? And like the Ray William Johnsons and the Freds and the Niga yeah. Higas like... I mean, I'd be surprised if any of those dudes ever touched millions of dollars, let alone billions, right? So yeah. when you're first, you don't really have a blueprint to work off of. You don't have anybody to lean on to for advice. And you kind of got to like figure it out as you go, right? Yeah. Like build the plane as it's flying. And it's, like I said, a tale as old as, the, as time. Me and the other founders, like young kids, all we were concerned with, all we cared about doing was making videos, around playing video games and kind of naturally building this like insane entity in phase clan right and you come across bad actors and it just takes one right somebody to sit down and take advantage of the fact and manipulate the fact that you don't know anything about business legal finance yeah. and kind of pill you on this concept of like you need me you need this you guys Bro, should do i've this. seen this you know so what i'm saying times. you're sitting there and like you're like well i don't know about any of this right i was you know six months ago a broke no 22 year old nobody living in my parents house yeah and i'm still like kind of broke like i don't really know how to convert this crazy fire success thing that we got going on yeah, into, into money, money. so yeah. maybe i do need like this right and long story short like i don't know this is something that not a lot of people know about but my shares in phase clan were straight up stolen from me like i didn't have my shares reissued back to me until right before we went public because they had to because we were about to go public you know what i mean so for a long stretch of time i actually wasn't on the on the phase cap table it's like an original founder was that strategic on their part or nah, just shady? no it's something happened like one of the first guys that came into the company and i can't name names because i'll get sued it's just annoying um there'll be a tell-all at some point in my right. life like this is a this phase is a movie and i don't know how it ends yet I'm hoping it's that, you know, classic Disney Channel, happy ending, off into the sunset. And I really think we have a real shot, but it's a f***ing movie. The first guy we ever met who, like, what I just described, you need this and you need that. Yeah. We'll take you to the promised land. This is how it's done. I love you and I care about you and I just want to see you succeed. Realistically, <laughs> this guy's just trying to sink his teeth in and suck everything he can out. God. That guy kind of played the whole divide and conquer game between me and the other founders took advantage of like, I had this like crazy sicko mental break and the day ones will remember it because it was documented. I was all over Snapchat during this time and tweeting out crazy. But I kind of lost my mind. I was in Europe for a little bit. around About the face stuff? Just early, early. This was, this was when I was like 24. So this would have been. Was it the girl stuff at the time? It was a combination of things. Yeah. Combination. It was, I was spending a lot of time in Europe. My life just radically, significantly changed. Like I went from, I'd been on a plane one time in my life from zero to 22 and now I'm flying all over Europe and I got this dude telling me like, I'm gonna help you guys get rich and this is gonna be, you know, the next Nike and yada, yada, yada. And like, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of zapped my out a little bit. Yeah. Took advantage of that, kind of drove a wedge between me and the original founders and used that opportunity to write me out of, out of the contract, out of like the, the cap table. And honestly, if it weren't for, if it weren't for me, me saying 
it, I'm not waiting around and taking the leap of faith and moving to LA and doing everything that I did with Rice Gum and the Nelk Boys and Summer mm -hmm. Ray and Alyssa. I would probably, I'd probably still be in Boston right now. I'd probably be hanging by my neck off a bridge or a beam in my house. Like seriously, like this is the you hear about like the horror stories you hear about where like that guy helped create X, Y, and Z and got out of it and yeah. now it's a billion dollar thing and you know what I mean he's yeah. broke it's like it's really foul and fed up I don't know business it's just weird how some people just see money man and dude it's, it's, it's so creepy and weird it's the worst it's because I I don't get me wrong everyone loves to make money of but, course and but like there's no issue with that when you take something of something that was like of someone's like true heart and, and like they built something that's so special because phase was special not just because it was like a gaming thing it was special because it was a real community yeah like it was it was yeah. people who were all kind of like yo we love this and you guys as creators all are like created that atmosphere that person comes in sees the the connection to this you know money essentially and they just see it as just dollar signs instead of like people and yep. they're just like oh i can make a ton of money Absolutely. and it's no it's it's beyond dude it's beyond and like that's kind of what my mission is not only for my own life but for phase as a community and as a company like I want to help people never make the same mistakes that I made. I want to guide young talent, promising talent. I've always been really good at spotting talent early. This is something I was going to talk to you about, which is interesting. Yeah. And I, I feel safer these guys with me than anybody else because I am you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can go talk to some dude who's going to pill you on the fact that you worked at Interscope or did this or did that or help break Eminem in the 90s. Right. Or you can work with somebody who really got through the whole process and genuinely is only interested in you making the right moves. You know what I mean? We can yeah. talk about business and breaking bread later. Like that comes Bro, later. It's so funny. We're so similar in that. Not not to the, I don't think to the exact scale, but I've had it, my own personal experience with companies and people who, you know, saw what it was and took the advantage and took the benefit. And I've dealt with that. And so beyond that though, the, my question to you about the finding talent, how do you know when someone has it? Because I've been pretty good at spotting this kind of as well. How do you know when someone has that, that like sort of X factor? To be able to succeed on the internet. It's it's just, I don't know, it's something about, it's a combination of two things. I think I think to invest your time and energy and effort and place a bet on somebody, they need to have both of the things that I believe are required. Really the only two things I think are required to hit like superstar, you know, S tier, top level success, which is one, natural talent and just a natural, like some, I don't know, you meet, you meet people like Aiden and you meet people like Speed and even off camera, like you just like, this person is a main character and they're just like, yeah. you might as well be a cartoon character plucked out of a cartoon, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, I and you know, I, I know people even in my day to day, just normal life who live normal jobs and live normal or work normal jobs and live normal lives who like, I think to myself like, dude, if you ever put in a camera at this guy, like yeah. you could be a superstar. But that brings me to number two, you also need that like sick obsession yeah. and insane work ethic, Fuck. especially in the world of content. Especially it's all now. about consistent, especially now. Yeah. And like streaming, like that's a whole nother thing. Like to be an Aiden Ross, you need to stream 10 hours a day. There's no like way around that. There's yeah. no shortcut. There's no cheat code. You need to turn the stream on and stream 10 hours a day. And realistically, you're going to have to do it for a long time and see absolutely no return yeah. on that time spent it's like everything though it's just like exactly it's just like everything but when somebody has both of those things when you see that level of commitment from somebody and that passion doesn't die out when you know the return isn't what they necessarily hope or dream of but the, yeah. but they in the belief like we've all met that delusional like kanye west type kid who's running around talking yeah. about he's gonna do it like i'm gonna do it it's i'm not taking no for an answer i'm gonna do it and then they have that special like it x factor too that's a kid i'm taking bets on all day yeah. firing shots into are you ever going to stream again streaming i never really streamed to begin with i like with it here and there especially when i was you know kicking it with aiden streaming is just like if you know anything about me in my history with content the fact that i have followers or ever like fell into Pretty that funny. bucket like under that umbrella like the fact that anybody could ever label me as a youtuber is hilarious because i'm like the furthest thing from consistent like i <laughs> yeah. i accidentally became one of the biggest vlog channels for a stretch of time and i you know quit and jumped back in a bunch of different yeah. times it's i don't know how people stick to me and continue to me i love it i appreciate it more than anything you guys are the only reason i have any leverage in like these phase meetings and 
Yeah. That's the thing too. Like it's not lost on me to bring it back to the phase thing. It's not lost on me that I have such a huge edge with a platform. I have the ability to jump on this show or turn on a camera at any time and let my know what it is. Yeah. Right. And that's always made me feel safe. It's always made me feel like I have, you know, some level of protection, but not everybody has that man. And there really are kids who get smoked and have no, like it's, it's. So what, what, going back to the phase stuff, what, how come rain's not a part of it now? Cause rain, rain, had I talked to, to, talk to rain regularly and it's not that he's not a part of it. Rain, he's phase rain, right? Like yeah. rain is one of the most important, crucial pieces of phase in phase history forever. He's got the logo tattooed on his body. Just the same rain cares more about phase clan than everyone on planet earth, except for exactly three people. And that's me, Tommy and apex. And we all care about it the same. It's, it's, transcended business or you know monetary opportunity bro if this was about money for me this phase i wouldn't be doing this you know yeah. what I, mean? I wouldn't be spending the time i get paid a modest salary to show up every single day and try i'm trying to fix this thing you know what i yeah, mean yeah. like i make way more money doing other and have honestly more fun doing other i feel like i owe it to this brand and this entity to fucking put my best foot forward and i believe that like it's not as complicated and hard as the corporate guys have made it made it be they just got lost in the sauce mismanaged it i think that it's as simple as making it fun again throwing a camera in the middle of a group of friends like the way it was with us in the phase house the original new york phase house and just let rock point a camera at the whole is that what probably nothing is (laughs) probably nothing is a crypto native media content platform so i'm doing vlogs on twitter not for no reason because crypto lives the crypto community lives on twitter, twitter. we call sure. it ct crypto twitter that's where ctv comes from yeah crypto twitter vlog we're on our we're making our fourth one this will definitely make a feature and yeah. i have a g7x on me right now that's how you do it i haven't been, i haven't vlogged in six years i'm making twitter vlogs for crypto and there's obviously a reason for that specifically on twitter because like i said it's crypto native but two and you're probably see, instantly the biggest crypto vlogger. Easily. Like By right the way, not, not only the biggest crypto vlogger, we've transcended that immediately into the biggest Twitter vlogger. I, there, I don't think there's yeah, really was anybody looking. else tweeting. I mean, um, yeah, tweeting out vlogs. Yeah. And it's funny because Steve's I was going to say that. Steve's obviously fucked on the YouTube shit. I'm going to Saturday to go do it. Sick. Was oh, it? really? Yeah. yeah, he asked me to jump on to. I got I to gotta follow up with that. Maybe I, maybe I hop on that. But he's like, he calls me and we talk for an hour about him doing his whole thing on Twitter. I'm like, Steve, you can do it. He's and there's all these metas we're learning, and it's it's fun because I'm like back into this like phase banks YouTuber mindset. I feel like I'm standing over T-Wop's desk and we're figuring out all these like interesting plays and how to like push our up the YouTube algorithm. It's a whole different game. Twitter videos don't get shared the same way YouTube does, right? Yeah. Like you're not getting pushed to the homepage. You're not getting in, you're not in anybody's recommended thing. But something we discovered you know, in this third vlog is this quote tweet meta where if you quote tweet a tweet, like if you quote tweet a video on Twitter and that your tweet quote tweet gets 100,000 views, those 100,000 views get allocated to the original post as well. Yeah. So they count toward the original post. Right. So if I put out a vlog and Steve will do it, quote tweets it and it gets a half a million views, that half a million views goes to the original post as well. Yeah. So now this original vlog on Twitter has a view count two million views like yeah. that's a banger you know what i mean that's now all of a sudden we're the biggest vlog on twitter never mind the biggest crypto native vlog which is a whole thing i didn't even i didn't expect to happen why i'm so bullish on content and crypto obviously i'm a little crypto freak i live with crypto native people and it's what i do every day it's what i have fun doing yeah um i'm passionate about it on a different level it it transcends the money part of it i i really i like living in the future you know what i mean And it's crazy. The parallels between traditional gaming, early gaming and crypto is one to one. Like I get, I talk about this in meetings sometimes and with the crew and I get the chills when I talk about it because it's literally bar for bar one to one from my perspective. And when I say that, I mean, I used to spend 12 hours a day on an Xbox, right? And my fucking parents and my friends thought I was 
a freak. They're yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? Like, are you good? I remember those Are you days. okay? Yeah. Like, why, why'd you stop playing sports? Why'd you stop hanging out with your friends? What the fuck is wrong with you? You're missing days of school for this. Shit? Like, what's wrong? And I'm like, yo, you guys are tripping. Like, I'm chilling. I'm cooking with my homies. And I put a headset on and I, 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 I enter this like weird little underground world where there's millions of people, so many people who are just as passionate yeah. about it as I am, spend just as much time. And when we talk to each other and the way that we communicate, it's like we're speaking a different language. It's like we're on a different planet, right? But then again, like I said, you look over your shoulder and nobody seems to realize or pay any attention, pay any mind to what's going on. And their initial reaction is to write it off. Like video You're games, bro. Time, yeah. Like <clears throat> when I first, I, I dropped out of school after I made my first little bit of internet money that was related to video games. I made a YouTube video, how to hack Xbox 360 gamer score. Made like 500 bucks, Google AdSense, early YouTube. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is crazy. And it really sent me down this rabbit hole. It's the only reason why I'm here with you today. Yeah. It's, I attribute all of my success to that moment. Um, but what that did for me is it made it very like it made it a real thing, right? And I'm yeah. trying to explain it to the outside world, to my parents, to my friends, and they're like, "Bro, are you f crazy? Video games? Like this is hmm. now you explain this YouTube content. It's the biggest thing ever. It's the biggest and, thing and ever. The video game industry is is insane. It's obviously valid. It's I think when they pull little kids, kids in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's a professional streamer, YouTuber, gamer, yeah. right? Like it's a very very real thing, but. But, you know, 2010, 11, 12, you're trying to explain this to people. They're looking at you like you're crazy. Yeah. And that's how I feel people interpret crypto and perceive crypto, if that makes sense. Just all the way down from, like, CT, the crypto Twitter, that's where we hung out. That's where gamers hung out, right? Like, it was the Twitter timeline. It was all little COD trick shotting kids. That's what my Twitter was for a very long time. We all talked to each other on Skype. Now it's Discord and Telegram. Yeah. I'm Phase Banks, Phase Rain, Phase Temper, Phase Apex, Phase Tico. We all have these weird names yeah. that originate from our gamer tags. We were all undoxed, never put our faces on a screen for the first, you know, for the first five years I was on the internet. Nobody knew what I looked like. Yeah. Nobody knew what my real Just name like was. Crypto. Just like crypto. Yeah, yeah, I see. It's crazy. You know what I mean? It's one to one. And I'm just like, the only two things that are different to me about these opportunities and what's ahead is now I have over a decade worth of experience, right? right? And two, the financial upside. It's me and my friends used to have to dig through the couch cushions to get the money to buy the new Call of Duty, right? And now I'm in a market where there are billions of dollars transferring hands. Yeah. A second in crypto, it's insane, right? So yeah. those two things for me, plus the fact that this is like very much the potentials and what the future looks like and how, how much the average person participates because now gaming is a real piece of the pie. And it's under, it's, you can't dispute that. Absolutely. You can't argue that it's a very real piece of the human pie. You think it's going the same way, right up there. hundred percent, hundred percent. I think it, um, I think it works its way into people's lives the same way that the internet has the same way that electricity has and running water has. I think that the biggest things are the shit that we participate in on a day to day that we don't even realize, right? Like there are people who are growing up now, and, and learning how to be a human who have never done it without the internet. And that's just a part of being a human now, like a default, yeah, so de facto insane. part. Of, it is yeah. like for me and you, that's insane. Cause we used to walk around our neighborhood <laughs> yeah. knocking on our friend's doors to see right. if they were home. Yeah. That's like, that'll never be the way the world Fuck, works dude. again, you know? And you know, the same is true for like, like I said, like electricity, running water. I know I probably sound Psyched no, no, right no. Now. It makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. I mean, you you were there in both spots. Like you were there when before gaming was like everything in the world, and now you're you know you're there really early on in crypto, and you're just seeing it. Yeah, it's not crazy. All right, guys, Crypto Runs for the podcast, TranscendCompany.com. Guys, if you guys are looking for a place to get your blood work anywhere in the United States, you guys can literally click the link in the bio right now. Blood work. They'll send the papers directly to your house. You go to a, a lab near you. You get a, you get basically get to take your blood. They're going to put your blood and they're going to give you what you need. That's going to help you best better your body. I promise you guys. They're, they've got the best doctors in the world. They got everything you could think of that you'd ever want. I promise you. If you have ever thought about doing something, if you're doing something, if you're if you're if you're dabbling in in we'll call it the arts right now. If you're doing it at all and you do not get your blood work done regularly, you are making a massive, massive mistake, okay? I couldn't encourage you more like to, to get your blood work done because it can be 
a problem for a lot of people if you're not doing it with the right way, with the right sort of care. So go to transcendcompany.com slash raw talk. Check it out right now. If you guys have ever thought about it, whatever you need, they have you, they got you, they're gonna hold it down. But at the same time, guys, it's very, very important if you're ever gonna dive into something like this, or if you're already in it, you need to know where your levels are at. So click the link below, get your blood work done. And even if you're like, yo, I've never even wanted to do anything, TRT or hormones or anything, but you've wanted to know what's going on inside your body right now because it's important for you to know because that's how you're gonna be able to optimize yourself on the outside, whether it be like a certain body goal, a certain business goal, everything is gonna come down to what's going on on the inside. If you don't know what's wrong, like what's causing you to not be able to get enough sleep, what's causing you to feel sort of lack of energy, what's causing you to feel low sex drive, whatever it is, a lot of these things can be fixed without hormones. And just knowing what's going on with your blood work is gonna be able to help you do that. So go to transcendcompany.com slash raw talk right now. If you have ever wondered like, yo, why do I feel like this? Why do I feel like that? And I got your back. Let's get back into the podcast. Now, now, as far as phase and crypto, everyone's like, yo, are you gonna turn phase into like a crypto company? Like what's going on here? Um, so there's no immediate And are, like, are we kicking out gamers and shit? So ge genuinely, listen, this is my only priority with phase clan is to protect the brand at all costs. The brand has been mismanaged and hoard out for so long and controlled by the absolute wrong, wrong people. We're finally in a spot where, thank God, Justin Kenna and Game Square have been such good faith partners and actors in just trusting the process. We've been on a blackout. I got the Twitter password back and the Instagram password back. I deleted everything, unfollowed everybody, and so, just said yeah. we got it back. With no real agenda, no real game plan, we're just doing in flow organically, genuinely. It's about reestablishing the brand, reintroducing the brand in it, just a fun, real way. Like there's no agenda. I wanna park the priority of like making money. And it gets complicated because we did just get acquired by a publicly traded company. And at the end of the day, like that's the way it works. All anybody gives a about in the world of business is profit and loss, making yeah. money versus how much money you spend. And it's just the sad fact of how it works. But I'm fighting every single day to make sure that these people understand why phases chart, so to speak, took a swan dive is because you guys lost the plot. You guys forgot what phase was to begin with. Phase is one, the brand and the logo and all the history and the, the movie that is Phase Clan. It's something that can never be recreated. It's a part of gaming history and internet history forever. Me and three of my friends met on Xbox with such pure intent. And all we wanted to do is play video games with our friends and, you know, slap this word in front of our name. And yeah. we're on this mission to just make the coolest videos we could. And it turned into this thing, like globally recognized, sick thing. And it got, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I just, it can never be recreated. The, how much money is in this market and in this industry now, it's all like VC. Like anytime anything has any sort of like shred of potential on the level that we had the potential, it's getting scooped up. It's getting bought out. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. just getting put through that machine immediately. Um, and I think it's really important to protect that. So how do you actually find the balance now? Because like, <clears throat> aren't you getting rid of a bunch of like actual video game creators? Well, we're definitely cutting the roster down significantly. Again, it's. Because like, at the same time, if it's about not recreating, because you never recreate what yeah. happened, but if it's about getting back to the core value of it, yeah. then wouldn't it be about keeping video game creators? Well, for sure. I mean, and the people, we're, we're cutting all kinds of people. Yeah, you know okay. I mean? we're, cutting, we're, we're cutting the roster down significantly. We had something like 140 employees this time last year. I think we have 30 right now. I want to cut that down even further to like 10. I've said this, I've screamed this in meetings for years. Like, we need five people. How many people work for you? Mm. my guess oh. would be five to ten uh more than a, uh i guess close. on a day-to-day -day? on a day-to-day -day. not like production Three. merchandise i wouldn't count those people your direct team. i'd say Who, yeah i'd say five to six. Five six sounds like a great yeah. healthy good yeah, number yeah. and i i would assume even like my like mr beast he's obviously expanded way out into you know his other branched off businesses but his core team who he works with on a day-to-day -day is probably you know five to 10 people who yeah. really, you know what I mean? And I don't know, I've argued for a really long time. We don't need, you know, 140 people in, uh, in an office space, walking through an office space. Who are these people? And what the f 
do they do? Yeah. It's like this crazy, it's all smoke and mirrors, bro. Yeah. Business, at the end of the day, the word business is synonymous with the word bull And that's the truest I could ever say. And that's really how it breaks down. How do we balance it? I firmly believe that as long as the brand is taken care of, as long as the people who are a part of the brand, you know, that roster of 10 people are all on the same page, have the same focus, have the same vision, and are incentivized the right way. Like the corny, like us paying members to put phase in their name and having that be the relationship, like that doesn't work. It's whack. I want no part of that. It doesn't do anything for either side. It's this weird transactional shit. We're not Red Bull, bro. We're not like, yeah. you know what I mean? We're this not trying to rain, slap our logo and talk a lot about this. It's very true. And yeah. Rain's genius, like brand mind, internet content mind. And I respect the fuck out of like his perspective on this. And we, Rain and I see eye to eye almost every step of the way when it comes to this conversation specifically. Yeah. Um, but like we, I mean, you talked about this earlier and I really appreciate it. Like giving us the flowers phase was the first content house. We made the blueprint for what, like how a lot of even today, like AMP and side men, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. All these hyper successful click brands, homies, groups of homies operate. The reason why they're all so as passionate about, about things as they are, they, they, they completely own these entities themselves together and they completely control the direction of which they move. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you removed either one of those, never mind both, if you removed either one of those, it would fall apart at the seams, right? Like it makes you have to properly incentivize people. And like, again, it's really not about money. Like at the end of the day, I'm trying to restructure this to where I don't give a if I'm on equal terms and own as much of this thing as a kid who I recruit two weeks from now. Like I, it just, I just want it to work more than anything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like this part of me forever. It's, it was the first tattoo on my body. Um, it was my dad's favorite thing that has ever existed on planet earth. It was the highlight of his life. It was what he was most proud of. It changed my life. I feel indebted to it personally forever. Like I said, all the historic significance and stuff. Like I just, Gonna, this logo is going to be on my tombstone one day. It's a part of my name forever. Like, I'm the guy who gets all these tweets of people like memeing and on me for the the way that the the SPAC and the IPO went. When like this, this isn't what any of us wanted to do or necessarily like. You know what I mean? Like we got chewed through this system and machine, and I just want to wipe the slate clean. Yeah, I think it's very very important that phase goes through a real deep cleanse, so to speak, and kind of just like wipes the slate clean and has fresh, new, positive energy. Yeah. A group of people, really focused, talented people driving toward the same goal, the same mission, and just having fun with it. So what sort of content though? Like, is it back to the vlog style? Shit? Are you looking for, like what sort of creators are you looking Kinda for? Kind of like figuring out as we go, like the lifestyle, shit, you know what I mean? Like there are, there are groups of kids and there are certain people that are creating content every day and on that content grind the same way we used to be who are reminiscent of us, who we fuck with, who I turn on their streams or watch their videos. And I want to work with people like that. You know what I mean? It's as simple as this kid's dope. I fuck with this content. I think I could help him, you know, A, B, and C. And I think he would work with us for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Yo, let's talk. Does this sound cool? Cool. And if things align and we're on the same page, then yeah, help me what build a, this face back up. You know what I mean? Let's run it up. What about Aiden? Because Aiden was jokingly Aiden's like, Aiden's the a, goat, man. Aiden would is. Would you a, sign him? I would. I mean, of course, I would definitely do business with Aiden. I have in the past. I mean, actually, really not. Like, we've never really done business together. But he's my brother. You know what I mean? Aiden's transcended like any sort of work relationship. He's my family. So yeah. it's all love, and anything he does, I support. Anything we do, I know he supports. And if it makes sense for him to jump in the face, it, you know what I yeah. mean? It, yeah, of course. Like that's what I want more than anything. I just want it. I just want to reestablish that sense of like homies just doing yeah. fun. Shit. Like I don't know. You sit down. You sit down with people, and they're either on the same wavelength as you. You're catching a vibe, or you're not. Right. Every whether time, there's yeah. a camera pointed at it or not. Yeah. And when we meet those people, where it really clicks, you don't want to let that person go. I have a question. You want on to that. either date them or be best friends with them, or you know what I mean. Yeah. And like I'm just. I want to collect as many of those people as possible, but not, you know what I mean? Quality over quantity. 
and just move forward with the squad. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I'm really curious because on that note, like the vibe thing, and <clears throat> at what point during the whole phase thing when it started to go south, when did you first recognize that you were like, oh, this is a problem? And then you kind of did, because obviously they were already in there, already had their hooks in. So my, my experience is really like much different. Like I said, I basically got excommunicated and kicked out of the whole operation, moved back to Boston from New York. Like I said, that first guy came in and kind of things up. Yeah. Pushed the other guys away from me, pushed me away from the other guys, used that as an opportunity to literally steal my. I made it my mission to, to make it so these guys wanted to me again. So it wasn't happening on its own. So I took the leap of faith, moved to LA, did my thing. We took over the internet for a stretch of time. Like the clout gang shit we did, like the funny, yeah, goofy clout gang shit we did was huge. And naturally, these guys kind of turned back over and were like, yo, Banks, all right, cool, you're back, you're doing your thing, whatever. And honestly, that's the whole reason why I moved to LA to begin with, because the guys had just moved to LA. It was always our plan, like our group plan. It was heartbreaking to see these guys move to LA without me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in a lot of ways, the best thing that ever happened to me, you know what I mean? Such a important part of my life and my story is that unfortunate, like rock bottom stretch of time. Move back here, start around. Um, and like got welcomed back into the fold, right? But like by that time, it was kind of already too late. Like the wrong people were kind of in control and, and yeah. like steering the boat. And this is another thing that I feel like people don't like, not give us credit for, but it's important to note that we all grew up in phase. Like e, I even feel that way. And I joined phase when I was like 20 years old, right? So Rain, Apex, Tommy, these guys, had been in phase since they were, I think, I think Apex joined phase when he was 15 years old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this, his entire adult became life became an adult. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, With yeah. a camera pointed at it. Like being a human being is not easy, yeah. especially under those circumstances. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a weird, there's a lot of weird that happens to you as a human being and being a human is never just a straight incline up. It's, a, you know what I mean? Yeah. We love life, personal. Yeah. All of it, dude. Yeah, Family. Yeah. Yeah. Things can happen like losing your dad that completely shakes your whole world and shifts your perspective and puts you on this insane, like, makes you live a way that you've never lived before in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we all grew up through all this happening while these blood sucking, like, vulture type people were around us. And it's disheartening, right? Like, there is such thing as being jaded. There is such thing as get, having your spirit chipped away slowly but surely. Like, you know, going in with your best foot forward and like bright eyed and like, I just want to do cool shit with cool people. And like, you trust the wrong people too many times in a row. And it's like, bro, people suck. Yeah. Like you said, like to bring it full circle. One of the first things you said in this conversation was like, it's so unfortunate how many people just literally only care. I don't about understand money. that. I'll never understand that. It's crazy because it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> it's like that. That's the thing that don't we all recognize that you the thing that only matters is like kind of what you leave behind and the things that you teach other people. Cause nothing 100%. else, nothing else goes on, no but reason. you're just greedy. Cause you just have all this money. You live your life in a way. And everyone knows there's how many conversations you have with rich people who have all the money in the world and they're still unhappy because they don't have like good relationships or yep. good friendships. Like it's just like, what's the point of it all? I'll never understand that. hundred percent. Cause I've had people who've completely me over in business who have a massive company who rode my coattails, but will tell me every single time that, they did it, not me. That's how and it's it like, goes. Wait. That's Anyways. why. That's why crypto and like giving your normie friends <sighs> crypto advice is like, it's such a small antidote, good metaphor to use in what you just said because it's exactly true. I ask you for advice and like crypto, for example, and if you give them a good cook play, they're a genius and it was all them. But if you if they lose money on it, dude, You're what the. Life, fault, you know what dude. I mean? It's crazy. There's no winning. I don't understand the accountability <laughs> and how people just pass. Like, no, just, it's fucked. Oh, it's, it's there's a, a quote I'm gonna probably botch. It's from like Confucius or Gandhi or one of those like goats, and it's something along the lines of like the only thing that matters is how many people you loved and like how much you loved. Pretty much, like that's really yeah. as like I and I absolutely botched that. But no, I mean nobody's ever been on their deathbed and like you know, regrets not closing that, that business yeah, they're deal thinking about or their, like their family. A hundred percent. It's always, I wish I did this. I wish I spent my time in this way. And I wish I spent my time with these people. Yeah. 
And that's how it always is. Like, even when you look at the most hyper successful by like everyone's metric success, people like Steve Jobs, like that's what his whole bit was at the end, right? It was like, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I worked less. Changed the whole world. You know yeah, what I mean? Did. It's Fuck, insane. He, the whole world. He changed the way the entire world works. Such a significant life. Such a successful life. But at the end of his life, he's like, man. That's the same thing. I lost matter. the plot. You know what I mean? And it's like. So how do you not, how do you, how do you stay grounded to that for yourself while you're still trying to like kind of oh, build man. yourself back? Not necessarily build yourself back, but build the company back and in the way that you'd like to. So you asked me before, I think we even started rolling, like, how have I been? And I responded and said, never been better and genuinely never been better. And I attribute it all to just the way that I've lived my life the last 15 or so months. Um, Unfortunately, my dad passed away last year, almost a year ago to the day, and it really shook my and I was, I'm 32 years old, I'm not a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. And up to that point, you know, I lived my life kind of all over the place, stumbling through life, you know, not really focused, in my opinion, on the right necessarily. I feel like I've always led with love. I feel like I've always had a good heart and like had really good intent in everything that I've done. But like, when I zoom out and look at a lot of the way that I've spent my time, it was clear like how unhappy and like, yeah, like lost and like just tripping over myself and kind of almost like self sabotaging my own was. My dad died at 55 and it like really put, cr put a crazy perspective in terms of like how I want to spend my time and like potential is a huge thing, right? I've always been told not to jerk my own off. I've always been told I have a lot of potential and I definitely haven't ever really lived up to it. You know what I mean? Like I kind of stumbled into everything that I have today and yeah. like minimal to zero effort getting here. You know what I mean? And I imagine sometimes like, like I got to buy my dad a crib, but he never got to like be on a private jet with me or like, and not that that matters, but I like, it. it's one of those things that drove me my entire life. Like, Oh my God, I can't like, I'm sitting, you know, cage side at the octagon watching Conor McGregor. I can't wait till I can, my dad can do this with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that's all that ever mattered to me for a long time. It's all that drove me. And I didn't get to really like see that through. And I know I'm kind of like rambling right now, but no, no, you're on it. <clears throat> but the, um, that should obviously change my whole perspective, shook my whole world. I've been sober now for 15 months. I quit nicotine 60 days ago. I pretty much exclusively only spend my time, my free time having conversations like these, like off camera. I, I just, I'm trying every single day to be a better version of myself than I was the day before. I'm waking up every day. It's a little cliche, but like gratitude, I really do believe makes the attitude and just like, I'm, I take a nice cold sip of water and I thank the universe and thank God I flip the light switches on in my house and they work and I thank universe and thank God. And that really got me through this last year. And um, on paper, this last 15 months, probably the worst time of my whole life. Yeah. But my attitude and my perspective on it and like the way that I've decided to handle it has in a weird roundabout way, I've like kind of hacked it into being the best time of my life if that makes sense it'll definitely prove to be the most important time i think of my entire life yeah it's, it's does all, that make sense of course yeah. yeah i lost my father when i was very young when i was six I'm sorry but i uh i totally get it man i think i think it's it's interesting from your your sort of angle or timeline of everything is like maybe the phase stuff dealing with the phase stuff and now, now dealing with the, the loss of the father um probably just gave you a lot more perspective on life and what really matters because for me it took me so long for for that to make sense, like that sort of pain that I carried for so long since I was a child into like, you know, young adulthood, into business, into friendships, into relationships. And uh, f I'm not trying to get emotional. Shit. Uh, <laughs> I love you, bro. Uh, yeah. You're awesome. Uh, um, sorry. No, you're good. But uh, it's, I just, I always find it so interesting because I, I think the, you know, we talk about life and what really matters and like it's, it is actual moments with people. Um, great dude brad sorry no you're good you're the best um it's like do would you say that your ability to deal with the loss of your father and and you know how you took it is almost somewhat 
not indicative of, but like you've learned through, I guess, quote, the loss, the, the, the downfall, the issues with phase and everything. Do you think that made this part of your life easier to deal with? It kind of left me no choice, to be honest with you. Like, like I said, on paper, I'm in this position where, you know, I put my faith and trust in all the wrong people. It felt like, right. And I'm at this rock bottom moment in my career where I was pilled on the fact that, yeah, like you're going to lose all control over this company and like the direction of this brand and your baby, it's a part of you. You know what I mean? You're the living embodiment of this thing. Um, but you'll get, you'll at least get rich in the process. You know what I mean? You'll be able to take care of your family and you'll be able to do all this cool shit with your dad and your brother and your stepmom who took care of your entire life. And when neither of those things happen and you're left holding the bag, I've never sold a face share. I've never made money on the valuation of face. All I've ever made money with at phase is a salary. There are literally hundreds of people who have made infinitely more money than me at phase and the other founders. Like that's the spot that I'm in in life. Um, and then, yeah, like the crossover and like, like the way the Venn diagram works with my dad and how much he loved this and his advice ringing through my head, trust yourself, trust your gut. There's going to be people trying to take this from you. Tell me and Tommy before we moved to New York. Before like, it even happened. And you think you're, it's your, dad being a dad like dude shut the up like we know what we're doing it's not that serious it's not that deep we play call of duty like calm down it's just like your whole world gets rocked and like it'll i'll i'll never i'll never be able to fully come to terms with the fact that like that's the note that my dad had to leave on was seeing like me in that tough spot because he saw it you know what i'm saying it's horrible like it's something that i'll never fully be able to like make makes sense you know what i mean but it was his favorite thing that's ever been created and that's kind of what i'm doing it for you know what i mean yeah that's, Man, the, that's the driver it is super heavy dude it that's is heavy. it is it is heavy well but is. i think man i guess that the only thing that's given me sort of but that's what matters the shit we're talking yeah. about right now that is what matters like you said it's what you leave behind it's like if i can help one kid accomplish that with his dad, like, you know what I mean? Not to yeah. get like super like poetic or cliche about it, but like, that's like, that is all I want. Like, that's all that I want for the rest of my life. And I'll never not trust myself again. I'll never allow myself to get that close to somebody who doesn't give a about me or doesn't have the same vision, priorities, values as me like ever again. I'll never allow it to happen ever again. Yeah. And, and learning that hard, tough lesson at 32, like I, I can live with that. You know what I mean? Like, I got enough time left to spend my time the right way to where yeah. I'm not, you know, hopefully on my deathbed. I wish I spent more time the right way. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, the beautiful thing is now, like uh, the position that I'm in, the position that you're in, you now have, you know, these platforms that you can jump on and speak and share this kind of shit with people who, for, for, for what it's worth, like need that. Because I, I think... You know, obviously everyone has to make their own mistakes and they have to learn their life the way they have to learn it. But there is a lot of value when you could see what where someone went through and what they went through and then like what they really learned from it. And we keep taking that same takeaway about like what really matters is like the moments you share with people. 100%. What do you share? What do you give? How do you share love? And like, it's so interesting, like that, that concept that you have of, damn, I wish I could have just showed my dad or had these sort of moments with him. But you were so caught up in like, you know. I guess the, the business side of it or, or the, the issues of your life and never really got to that point with it. But now it's you like, just always think that you have more time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just always like, we're going to have it. We're going to have it. And like, I'm a big, like got I'm a big believer in like manifestation and like it starts in the mind and stops in the mind and like you see it, want it, believe it naturally move toward it. I think that's a huge part of like success and accomplishing. And like, I always just like had that, like, He's going to get it. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to get it. I know I'm going to get it. But then it happens, you know, not necessarily the way that you planned. And you don't have as much time as you thought you did. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know what's f***ed up. Yeah, but, it's, <clears> but, it's, but at the same time, it's beautiful because it's a part of your story that, like, you know, even as you age now and as you progress forward on the internet, in the crypto space, the phase space, or whatever the f*** you decide to do, you'll always have that to share and give to someone. For sure. To any, any kid, any person listening to this podcast or anything you do forward, like, that's what life is about. As, as crazy as it is, like all these things that people get so, you know, heartfelt about or, or hurt or like pain in regards to like losing a father, losing a family member, anything, right? 
it all comes down to the same thing. Like that is the point of life. hundred percent. And then are you able to share it? Even if it's just when you're, you know, the being on a podcast, but like one person in your personal life and share it, like your experience with that person goes, Oh, maybe I can navigate or be better in my life. hundred percent. Cause that's the only thing that we talk about the, the Steve jobs thing. That's the only thing that really goes on beyond that. And to bring it full circle on the question on everybody's mind and all anybody really wants to ask me about or talk about, that's really all that matters at phase right now. Genuinely yeah. like that concept that idea it's very simple i feel like these are overcomplicated it for a long time homies having fun on the same tip creating cool living life on their own terms and you know sharing the wealth of knowledge and experience and like it's just reminiscent of the phase new york house like oh try this in your title and do this with a thumbnail and like we're learning yeah. in real time like these youtube metas and sharing it with yeah. each other and it's like that was the highlight of my whole life. And that's, I just want to, I want well, that again. Well, it's beautiful because now there's so much more. Yeah. Like yeah. there's like 10 the times. It's crazy. It's, it's insane. The internet's so weird now. Like how everything's it's wild. YouTube's changed. And Snapchat's now this big player. And it's because it's not the internet anymore. It's just life. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. it used to be like this internet thing. Like, and the way I used to talk to people about it was like, yeah, we do this weird internet thing. Yeah. And, and they really would like, dog, you're a YouTuber. Now it's like, oh, that's everything. It's just it's just life. It's so wild. It's so crazy. That's yeah, like, man. I'm going to pill you a little bit more on this, like crypto web three weird, but like, that's the way I really think that it's going to be in the future. I just think it's more and more and more of it. Cause, but what sort of other projects <clears throat> go? I feel like it's, I still feel I like just it's, think that we're going to exist. In, there's going to be a whole separate realm in reality. There kind of already is, but like where like you throw a headset on and it's ready player one and you have a whole second life. And like you, you walk around this world and you look like a, dragon and i look like a fucking, i see I what like you're spider saying spider man and we're but fucking like, running around doing weird yeah because like i see this. weird like there's tons of like this but do you think there are pitfalls to that though for like actual humanity like human human 100 percent. it's horrible some girl is doing this thesis on some college last night with her with her iphone mic out asking me questions about what do i think the effects of social media have on young girls and young boys and it's obviously super destructive in so many different ways, but it's just like, I guess, I don't know, this earth thing, this human thing, it's just this experiment happening live in real time and we'll see where it all, you know, lands. Yeah, it's completely nonlinear. It's insane. Yeah, it's just Who like, knows? There's no real way to know. All we can do is hope the good guys come out on top, put our best foot forward and just like everything else, just be your best. If everyone's your best and everyone's honest and everyone has, you know, the values that we just talked about, the world probably looks like a f***ing, you know, good place, even if it's like a weird digital, yeah. anti-social, like borderline <laughs> yeah. autistic realm. Put the know? thing on, sit in your room. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just picture like so many weird movies or TV shows and I'm like, it's going to end up like this. Black Mirror, yeah. Ready Player One. Like, like you know, the Black Mirror where uh, the astronaut was in space, but yes. he went to his body and it was obviously that weird like murder thing with the yep. family. But that shit is how I picture like weird. That's like, what that's what it's gonna look like, bro. That's that's what I believe it's gonna look like, and I think yeah, I'm taking a lot of bets on that. Um, do I do I know? Do I think it's gonna be necessarily a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. You know, if you ask me that about social media in 2010, I'd probably have the same answer for you. I don't yeah, think I don't we'll know. ever we'll ever have the answer because it's moving at such an exponential rate. We almost can't keep up with the rate that it's yeah. it's moving. I know? feel like it's making humans less human. For sure. Like it's just, it's and like, that's kind of probably where the next chapter, that's what the next chapter probably looks like. It's the Jeff Bezos replacing their heart with some like computer, animatronic yeah. computer jet control. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, absolutely. Slowly but surely, we turn I mean, into Neuralink, these, all these things. It's dude, literally doing that. 100%. Like, there's a guy who, you know, he's not, he can't, he's not audible. He can't really move. And he's like controlling a computer with his yeah. mind. Like the Terminator and type shit. Like, this world at some point maybe looks like one giant, like, just mechanical machine of a ball and it's all computer operated and generated. There is no biological life anymore. It's just the earth is one giant computer. You know what it's I mean? It's so weird. <laughs> it's the, trans the transition of that's so interesting because you get to the point where like jobs are like pretty much obsolete. And then because I, I saw it's actually Elon when you think about it, it's I know. so like I saw Elon Musk talking about like there needs to be like there's going to have to be a universal income because like people aren't even going to have jobs. They're just not going to like, it's cute. Like an I, allowance. Yeah, yeah. Because like, but I also wonder like, dude, at some point, cause I can't imagine like specifically in the Western society, like the U S being like, all right, 
you know, here's well, the a- rate at which inequity exists. And like, I'm, I'm more like right leaning and more like, you know, Me too, fiscally yeah. conservative and shit. And I really do believe in like capitalism and the fact that like, you know, if you're the hungriest and you're the most driven and you work the hardest, like you deserve to win the biggest. Like that's just, it's fair. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like the gap in inequity and just like what exactly what you're talking about right now, it, at this rate, 10 years from now, literally the only types of people that are going to exist are hyper wealthy people or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Impoverished people like yeah. super poor or super rich. And that's obviously not like a healthy. Yeah. The middle class is. Being- yeah. The middle class is like evaporating yeah right Dude, now you know so. what's something i saw that was really weird i don't know if you've seen this or not maybe it's just uh, it might be i'm just a weirdo for seeing this but you know how there's only fans yeah obviously and there's girls on the internet they sell only fans i've literally found girls who aren't girls they're computers and yeah. they don't sell only fans because they don't have a social security number but they have a patreon account so it's some random guy creating a fake girl That's and crazy. selling content for a fake girl i'm not surprised at all i mean people already we are, we know a bunch of these only fans girls none of them are in control of their chat none of them manage their accounts you know what i mean yeah they show up they show up to a set just like this they take some pictures you know what i mean they might do it or two and they <laughs> jump off the set and they print money and there's people who take advantage of the algorithms and know exactly what to say and yeah. like crunch all the numbers. Yeah. And it's, you're not, when you're talking to these guys and jerking off and thinking you're talking to whoever the, it's really some like 25 year old paid intern who just understands like how OnlyFans works. Yeah. But that, that taking that a step further and like fake girls, like, yeah, that's, it's insane. But that's, that's also <clears throat> just like, well, what the- is happening though because i how are I don't, it's insane dude i know i saw that and i was like dude this is next level like next thing you know they're gonna have an only fans for ai nuts <laughs> like, i don't think people necessarily even care you that's the I mean? thing like, that i find interesting fucked. is like i i'm, I'm wondering if the people who are you know subscribing i'm sure it's not as many as people who are subscribing to like actual girls but i wonder if they even know or if they care because i've seen when they'll take girls bodies and ai a face yeah so it's not the girl but it's a girl's body i feel like there aren't enough movies and there aren't enough media dedicated to like predicting what the future looks like like there aren't enough good ai movies there aren't enough good yeah. like you know what i mean i feel like those it's like so relevant people are so interested in it and they should make more it's such a it's such a conversation like everyone's having this conversation it just it blows my mind that there aren't more like you know what i mean siri you remember like, the fifth element Flying cars. Is it Bruce Willis? Is that is that the uh, is it like an alien movie or it's no? like Bruce? Yeah, kind of. Aliens are definitely in it. Like flying cars. Bruce yeah. Willis is like the stone thing and this aliens. You know, yeah. it just reminds me. Like it just reminds me. Like I remember being a kid, being like, I wonder if the world ever looked when I was young. Young flying cars is always the thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's so. We've been talking about it forever. Like, what does twenty twenty look like? Like flying cars. It's, it always came back to like our cars flying yet. Yeah, that's what it always was. Yeah, no. Ready Player One and like X mock is it Machina? Yeah, that movie. Yeah insane yeah you know what i mean like but more like that you know what i mean like we need more media like that <sighs> yeah, somebody man. fucking make it happen I, I just dude i always just get the thing that i always trip on is getting back to like the humanness of it like we're, we're essentially it seems like we're going to become like a, androids yeah facts we kind of already are like ever we need this thing without this thing we are like toast yeah but that's it's, scary it's kinda- because it could all just be shut off which is the scary part which is like you know how you look back at old tech and you're like that is insane like it's so clunky it's so slow it's so inefficient like people in 100 years are going to look at us and be like look at these monkeys running around with these fucking like little tiny bits of technology in their hands glued to it yeah now that it's just wired into our brains you just see it we're not even living in a in a in a real plane we're in a cloud somewhere and like it's it's gonna look so up Human, yeah, but it's like, is it good? Is it good ultimately? Because I've, I've, I don't know. It just seems like it leans more towards the the ability to be controlled, for sure. Like That's controlled sure. in a, in a way where it's a little bit scary. But then the counterbalance of like the open conversation that people have, right? Like we saw the ability of like the government to control people through what just happened with like COVID, for example, right. and like yeah. even control people on such an emotional, personal level. Like how identity politics has played such a giant role oh, man. in like American culture in the last five years. But now here we are in 2024 and everybody's kind of leveled out and kind of like seen that for what it was and kind of like, you know what I mean? Like got back to a nice set. If things feel better right now. They definitely feel better than they have, you know, yeah, through the sure. COVID. For it feels sure. like everybody's leveling out. 
Um, and I feel like a big part of that is just like the open line of communication. Like we all are talking like in this big giant group chat that is Twitter. Yeah. And like we all have like so much more access but to I information. Feel, I feel like we're also creating, we're ending up in a space where like, it, it's also like anyone could seemingly say anything. And like, there's not a lot of like, like truth is becoming very blurry. One, I mean, the deep fake and like botted accounts. Like you, you can't really, it is becoming harder and harder to tell if you know, what tweet you're receiving, for example, is from a real human or not. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that is a little bit scary for sure. Um, but again, I think it, the way it shakes out is people will be so like, it'll be so normal and so off. Like people will take it less seriously as they do now. You know what I'm saying? Like the feedback or like maybe comments from like anonymous accounts. Like it'll be written off and valued less than it is today because people are so adjusted to the fact that like it's probably a robot. Like, you know what I mean? It's spam. Or it's an ad. It. You know what I mean? I feel mean? like there's too many dumb people that go, oh, this is real. Yeah, no, definitely right now. I mean, like boomers and stuff. Anybody older than us is like kind of, f but like <laughs> yeah, kids yeah. now, like the nine year old kid who like grew up on an iPad, like that is going to be more in tune and more tapped in than we are. You know what I mean? He's yeah. going to be able to identify that easier than we do. You know what I'm saying? So I see. As I see the what old you're people saying. die and as the young people grow up, like I just, I don't know. I have faith. Like I, I think you really, all you can really have is faith, right? Like who really knows? The way it shakes out. I've always liked to exist in the future. I've always felt comfort and like been excited to like think about what things look like. And yeah. like, I don't know. I've kind of like, that's kind of the way I've always moved through life. I don't know. It's exciting, but it is scary. What do you, what, what makes you the happiest right now? <laughs> You're always so interesting to me just as a person. Like, just, I want to say like, every time I would see you, I'd be like, is this guy <laughs> happy? I swear. It's a good question. I mean, and honestly, more often than not, and the experiences we've had together, the answer is probably no. It's such like a it's such a hard thing to answer too. Because like, girls were never hard for you. That no, was always easy. That that part, I saw that like oh this guy. I I'm not that. saying you know I was like yeah for sure. But that's like that superficial shit that like you start life thinking like money really matters and like yeah. having hot girls you matters and you know dressing like this matters and having these friends matter and that's another lesson I really am grateful to have learned young. It takes experiencing thing. I mean, you've everybody's heard this a million times, but you really got to live it to really have it hit where you're sitting and overlooking LA in the hills and your bathroom's bigger than the house you grew up in. And there's a supermodel in your bed and you've accomplished, you've blown every expectation you ever had for yourself out of the water. You've reached your goals and dreams and thousand X to that. And you're looking over this view that you've dreamed and envisioned your whole life and begged the universe for, and you're sad. Yeah. And you're like, something's missing and I don't feel good. How's that possible? How was I happier broke in a shoebox sized room playing Xbox on a broken Xbox? How was I happier then than I am now? And that's where like that perspective shift comes and like, it's who you're doing with. Yeah. And why you're doing it. Yeah. And the time spent with the people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, that's kind of why I jumped off the vlog and kind of got out of the content game. It was never really like, I was never really in it again. If you look at the history of like how I came to be who I am individually, it really was little sparks and flashes of me kind of popping in and out. And like the demand for my content again, not to jerk my own dick off, has always like way exceeded the supply. And I think that's where a lot of my success comes from. Yeah. Because most people, yeah. when they see that demand, pump out, you know, 85 videos a day if, if like the, the demand yeah, yeah, asks yeah. for it, right? Yeah. And I just was never that guy. And I kind of jumped off at like my peak. And like, like my last video was that Tifu video and it got like 11 million views and a million likes and anybody else, any other YouTuber or whatever, you know, crank 10 videos out of that situation. And I use that as, you know, as a marker, my final, like, see you later. I'm over this. And this cloud obsessed content media world, like, it attracts all the wrong people. And yeah. I'm over it. Like, I don't yeah. need to do that. I'm confident that I can figure something else out. Um, but yeah, the odds are I wasn't happy. Um, I am happy now, genuinely. And I think what makes me happiest is like, I don't know, like, I'm 32 and I've, I wake up every day 
fucking 8 30 in the morning and put music on and order a coffee and do my little routine brush my teeth and i make my own bed now and i do my own laundry now and like it sounds so goofy and like <laughs> weird but it's it, like i swear to god those things make me happy and maybe i'm just getting old maybe i'm a a boomer for that but like <laughs> It's those funny. things set me up for a great day. You know what I mean? Like, again, just like starting my day off, like plugging in a light and looking at the light that I, you know, bought a couple years ago and just like, I love this light. Like, you know what I mean? It's such a weird. <laughs> I love lights, dude. You know what I'm saying? It's I such a weird lights. example, but it's like not, that's not weird lighting a candle all. and like, I love the way this smells. Like today's a good day. It's time to suck today's. See the, the lights and the, yeah, yeah, the incense. Yeah, yeah. crystals. And, yeah. No, I fuck with it. But it's just like. It's, it's finding like genuine joy in like your day-to-day -day present life. I think a big part of being happy is remaining present. I think it's so hard sometimes. Yeah. It's so impo it's impossible sometimes, but like it's a battle, bro. Being yeah. a human being is not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, we'd all be blobs of flesh who have absolutely no personality and nothing to offer each other. That's a you fact. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a fact. And I just feel like when you spend too much time in the past, that's where like depression comes from. Like woulda, shoulda, coulda, fuck, I missed that girl or fuck, I fucked that opportunity or fuck, like, how did I get to be obese? Like I should have, yeah. you know, I should have stayed stuck with baseball and worked out. And I, you know what I mean? That's where depression comes from. I feel like existing too far into the future and too much in the future is where anxiety comes from. Like, what, where am I going to be? Like, how am I going to pay Absolutely. rent? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And these things are important. It's important to reflect on your past. It's important to prepare for the future. But at the end of the day, like right now, this present alive moment, where are we? We're on a set. Look how amazing this is. You yeah. created this content IP and you're, you're probably in a position where you can support not only yourself, but your family and the dogs that are running around. You created this whole thing around yourself and you're across from me who you know, has, hasn't done terrible for himself and we're sitting on a couch and we're comfortable and we're healthy in this moment. We're alive. Like yeah. in this moment, things are okay. And even as bad as they could be nine times out of 10 in this moment, you're probably okay. Unless yeah. somebody's got a knife to your throat yeah. or a gun to your head or you're, you know, over toilet bowl, vomiting, sick, sick, you know, unless you're in, in the dirt in that moment, you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Cause like <clears throat> truly, like, even though, like you said, it's important to prepare for your future. It's important to, like, learn from your past mistakes. Nothing else actually exists. Yeah. Like, in the, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything we think of and everything we want, like, how we get to that idea in the future or how do we not make the same mistakes we made in the past is all about right now. 100%. How I mean, you like, act, how you treat people, everything. Your whole life is just a string of dominoes of experiences, one after the other. And, you know, the only reason why this one's happening right now is because every single one happened before it. In both of our lives separately, yep. which is, and then your mom and your dad's lives. And it's, my, it's crazy. It's wild. It's like astro uh, astronomic. Like the odds are so heavily stacked against this being possible that it's yeah. like, how can you not appreciate that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's like, I don't know, my philosophy on just like good things happening versus bad things happening. I don't really necessarily buy into either of those existing. I know it sounds, but. I think that just like I said, everything that's happened in my life has led to this moment and was only made possible because everything happened before it. You know what I mean? All the good, all the bad. The relationship that good has with bad, it's such an intricate process. Like it's just like it's just a lot more complicated than this sucks or yeah. fuck, well, this it has is awesome. to be. It has to be. Like you could hit the lottery tomorrow, have four hundred million dollars injected in your bank account. Sick, right? Dope. Nobody's mad at that. That's and awesome you're probably on the phone all day you can't believe it you're beside yourself you, yeah it literally this isn't real this is the best day of my life you book a private jet you load it up with all your homies everyone that works for you your family we're going on a trip i booked this private island we're living there for the next month it's going to be the sick ever. we're celebrating baby we're rich that's it gg the plane crashes everybody you have ever cared about dies and in that moment you hitting the lottery was literally the worst thing that yeah. ever happened to you. Or, or you did have no side. idea how to deal with it. Yeah, or yeah. If and a less extreme it. example, right. we see it all the time. People get rich and like get addicted to drugs and they're, they divorce their wife and like yeah. their kids end up hating. You know what I mean? Like, and then again, you're at the end of your life and you're like, wait a second, I blew it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. On the flip side too, like 
you could be on your way to work and get into a car accident. You already had a morning and like now your car is totaled. Your piece of lemon of a car is totaled. Your boss doesn't give a He's over you being late. You're fired. Things couldn't be any worse. You're, you're one more L away from maybe putting a gun in your mouth and calling it quits. You get rushed to the hospital because you're up from the car accident. They do a CAT scan and it's a miracle. The doctor walks in and he's the look on his face. They catch this like benign tumor attached to your brain or your lungs or whatever. And, and he can't believe it because if you waited even a month longer, you're to, done, you're done yeah. terminal. You're done. You have six months to live. But the good news is we're going to operate on this right now and you're going to be fine. You're going to live a, a healthy, normal, long yeah. life. And now all of a sudden that horrible experience was the best thing that ever happened to you yeah. and probably shook you into a new like line of thinking, a new perspective. The grass is greener and the colors are brighter and fresh air smells better. And it's just like yeah. you have a newfound appreciation for life and it sets you up for a way better life than if that hadn't happened. Yeah. And, and then, 20 minutes before the doctor came in and told you that it was the worst day you've ever had. Yeah. That's life. And then it's just learning how to continuously <clears throat> go through that and how to continuously fight for that that being present and like being good in the moment, even though it's not always supposed to be. I mean, bro, it's like, it's cool. It's cool talking to you. Cause like, obviously you have all the success and you've been doing this for so long, but you've clearly gone through a lot of as well. And it's like, everything you say is so spot on. I'm just glad we had this conversation. Yeah, fuck Cause I think this is really important for people to listen to and to, and to hear. I expected it too. And like I said, for what it's worth, I really don't do this. Like I don't do podcasts. I don't jump on people. Like I, you know what I mean? I, I've been obviously toying with the idea of doing more content and stuff as it's relevant to phase and as it, as I feel like I kind of need to for phase and shit, but like I don't know I really only feel comfortable doing it like this when it feels organic when it feels like it has purpose and potential to like help I'm really happy I did this I'm stoked that yeah. I came you you that was so damn important bro dope sick. like really important. Hey, not bad for a kid who hopped off the content wagon Bro, but six you, years but that's, ago. <laughs> we talked about earlier, like you, you have that thing. Because if you could spot that thing and if you know what that thing is, you have it. To bring it full circle and to wrap it up in a really poetic, amazing way. Internet 2017. Let's bring it back. It's insane. Bro, Wait, let's bring it back. I have a vlog camera. We got to bring it back. That was the best time ever, bro. This is insane. It was the best time You're ever. You're sitting with me, I'm vlogging. On the set, let's go, baby. Talk. This let's is go. fucking insane. We got TG in the back. Let's go. I have a G7X in my hand. It's 2024. We got to make it 2017 again. 2017. 2017. Bring in the vibes back. Internet all 2017. Year. You already know, baby. Look at me on the G7. This is crazy. It does feel like Internet 2017. It feels like everybody's in their creative bag. It feels like everybody's kind of snapping back into like, wait a second, what the fuck is this really all for? Yeah. And I. I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, I'm, bro. I'm excited. And thank you for having Blessing me. Blessing to have you, man. Really thank go. you so much for coming. I need a hug from you, bro. Yes, sir. I love you. Thank you, bro. I love you to death.